the Wayne Ayers Podcast. The Wayne Ayers Podcast. Woohoo! Time to wake your ass up for a blessed day. What's up, everybody? It's the Wainers Podcast, episode 65. We got a legend coming on today. The legend, legend, legend. Let me say that again. Legend coming on today, Kelly Hugh. I don't have a mic or anything. I'm not at my own house, so I hope this suffices. No, yeah, yeah, I can hear you perfectly clear. It's good. Okay. No, um, thank you for coming on today. Like, I've been like a, like, a fan of yours for like forever. Like I don't even know. Like, just, like <laughs> I've been alive right for that long. I've been alive <laughs> for fucking ever. <laughs> but no, like I've been like every like everything from Scorpion Queen, Cradle to Grave to even like Finding Oana. Like I I feel like that movie deserved way more better. But um, that's yeah. So you just sweet. yeah. You did like you've been like a lot of my favorite projects. Even like uh, voice acting and animated stuff, TV shows. Like you, you literally been a part of like a lot of my favorite things. So you I know, I'm, I, I'm so lucky. I have one of those careers where um, the kind of projects that I get just have like really awesome fan bases. You know, a lot of like comic book stuff and you know games and all that kind of stuff. It's my 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 career's just been such a blessing. Metal oh, yeah. nothing on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Got, got a lot on me. <laughs> well, I want to know, like, how do you even go about like picking your projects? Because like it's like a lot, even like a lot of my friends, like, yo, like when I tell you I'm gonna even kill you, they're like, yo, she's been a part of like everything we love. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like how do you even go of like just even picking a project out? Well, you know, I mean, my projects kind of pick me, right? Like you, yeah. you get the auditions and, you know, there are certain things that I guess you're more known for. And so that's sort of the more of the auditions that you get sent. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. There's like a, I don't know what's going on outside. You know what? Right there now. is a little bit of a warble. Warble? Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Is it fine? I can hear you. It's just uh, a little bit of a warble in the background when you're not talking, and um, and you're a, you're coming in a little bit quiet. But maybe that's because I'm also deaf. Okay, maybe. Okay, I'll, go. I'll <laughs> make sure. My, my bad. I'm so sorry. No, <laughs> I, like, okay. yeah, I can still hear you. Okay, cool. So, like, what? Like, my question is, like, how do you like? You, I know you do like. I mean, everybody, you do acting, but like, how do you go about like voice acting? Like, how did that even come about? You know, I just kind of fell into that. Um, uh, it's, it's so crazy because there's so many people who try so hard to get into voice acting and it's such a, a, a small sort of tight knit community. Um, but I think what it was, was, um, I, uh, they had auditioned me, they were looking for an Asian woman to play Stacy on Phineas and Fur because, you know, she's an Asian character. And um, and so, you know, nowadays, of course, with, you know, everything being sort of more PC, they try to cast people of, you know, the correct ethnicity, right, for whatever yeah. the, the character is. And um, and I just, you know, it's literally because I was able to scream the loudest and I was <laughs> able to be like, you know, like crazy, you know, riled up. The character, you know, the audition was me trying to get Candace all riled up in, you know, like uh, almost like a boxing manager, you know, and um, and 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 after I did the audition, the um, producers literally told me, thank you for being so loud and being able to, you know, just scream and yell from like your gut, because that's what they were looking for, I guess, um you know, all those things that my mom yelled at me for when I was a kid <laughs> <laughs> actually paid off. <laughs> has has there ever has there ever been a project that you like weren't a part of that you kind of like, I mean, I really wish I was a part of this because you've been a part of so many like classic things already. Oh my God, so many, you know, but you can't do everything. And um, and also, you know, it's um, I, I really believe in destiny, you know, I believe that if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, you know, there's other jobs. It's my, my entire career doesn't depend or, or sanity, um, doesn't depend on whether or not I get a certain job. 
you know, I, I think I've been doing this for long enough to be able to just, you know, understand that um, a lot of times it's not you. A lot of times they already have somebody in mind and they just have to go through the audition process, you know, um, or sometimes, uh, you know, you you they're trying to match you up with somebody else and maybe you're too tall or too short or you know, whatever the the reason, you know, I just, uh, I try not to take it personally and just, uh, you know, do my best. Oh, okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I don't know this might, this might be a little odd topic, but like, has there ever been like a person that you were like starstruck by? Cause I remember like the first time I saw Angela Bassett, I was like, oh my God, like that's my mom's favorite actress ever. So it's like, it just was weird seeing her first time ever, like in person. So has there ever been a person that you just been starstruck by? You know, I it, that would totally happen, and I'm waiting for it to happen someday with Meryl Streep, of course, because <laughs> she's just a god, right? Um, and Barbara Streisand, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, you know, she, I've been a fan of her since I was, uh, you know, dancing ballet at like five years old, um, and uh, so I think in real life, like, um like Sting might be the biggest person. Like he he introduced himself. He's like, hi, I'm Gordon. And I'm like thinking to myself, no, you're not, you're Sting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad like you had like a good, like um, just reaction with him. Cause I know some people don't even get like good reactions from certain people and be like, oh, that must be heartbreaking. Oh yeah, I've had that happen. <laughs> I'm not going to say who, but that has happened. And you know what? Uh, people have bad days. That's you true. Know, you can't always catch everybody at their best. And I'm sure that I've done that to people unknowingly where, you know, it's just not the right time. Um, you know, we try, you know, we, we, we tr I do try to, to, to always be on my best. And I'm a little bit better about that now than I used to be. Uh, I'm a bit more in control, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, you know, I, you have to give people grace. That's you true, know, uh, like I I mentioned it earlier, but like Finding Ohana was like so such a beautiful film. And I know you're from Hawaii as well, but like, how was like shooting that? How was like Wait, shooting did that? You film? have kids? Is that why you watched it? No, I don't know why I watched it. Ooh. I don't. I don't know. I just I remember just putting it on, and I was like, oh, yeah. this is actually a really good movie. I don't have any kids though. I wasn't. I was just, <laughs> it was yeah. I, was just, I think I watched that one by myself. And I told That's my so I told my cute. friends I was like, y'all gotta watch this movie. This <laughs> is like really beautiful movie. It really is. It's it's it was such a great film to be able to do because, um, you know, going back to Hawaii and also it's one of the few films that you see about Hawaii that really captures um, a, a lot of the reality. You know, it, we're not just, you know, animated figures or, um, you know, it's not like the the tourist side of Hawaii. Uh, you really do get a sense of some of the history and uh, the culture and um, and some of the struggles as well. Um, and, you know, it, it was one of these movies that did so well. I think we were number one in the world for like three or four weeks in, in, in a row. It was shocking. Um, and and yeah, it was really an honor to be part of that because also the director and producer, even though they were not from Hawaii, they were so respectful of the culture and made sure and very open to suggestions and collaboration and things like that. So, so, you know, it really shows, I think in the film, you know, it was, I really felt like it was such a collaborative effort. Yeah. Is there anything that you wish that you could like, that really would have like displayed Hawaii more. I know it was like a really ar already that way, but is there anything like you wish like, man, I wish you guys kind of had this in here. So, it, or, you know, yeah, something like it's that. Only, it's only like an hour and a half or two hours. Right. So you can't fit everything that Hawaii is in one little film. You know, you've got to also tell story and, um, and have the adventures and the action and stuff like that. Um, but I think it did a good job in um, showing some of the struggles that happened in Hawaii. And it's also one of those that's made for kids, too. So you have to keep that in mind that you don't want to get too real with what's going on. You know, you want to sort of keep it light. But um, but yeah, it was um, I think they did a really good job. I, I mean, 
I would love to see more people learn about the complex history of Hawaii. You know, there's like, um, there's always the tourist side, right? That everybody gets to see. And that's that's kind of what we want people to see. We want people to be able to come back and enjoy and, you know, like enjoy the lovely beaches and, you know, the drinks at poolside and the hula shows and whatnot. But um, but the 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 culture in Hawaii is so much richer than that. Um, you know, we have our own language and our own history. We had our own royalty. I mean, most people don't even know how uh, how our royalty was overthrown by the U.S. military, like uh, illegally. And so it's very complex. And I wish that we could have uh, a film that really showcased um, that part of Hawaii as well. Okay, yeah, I just I would say I would be interested to in see that because I know like a lot. I, me personally, I don't know like a lot about. I know I have some friends, but they don't really tell me like the history as much. Yeah, I don't know, they I don't want to get into it. But I, yeah, I don't, yeah. So I don't, I, I don't ever like. Oh, let's just get into it. But no, they they don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. But um, speaking of Final Hana, is there gonna be a sequel? Cause I was like, yo, I, like I really want to see a sequel to this. I don't know. I want to know like you what. No, if you time. find out, will you let me know? Because <laughs> <laughs> nobody tells me anything. <laughs> I don't know, and 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 the kids are getting kind of big now, so I'm not sure. Like you know, if 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 there is a sequel, it'll have to be like you know the college years or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I was just I, I was just really interested to see like what happened to the character next. It's like okay, so you're not gonna. I feel like a lot of people are like, yo, is there gonna be a sequel to this film? But um, I guess. <laughs> There could be, you know, there could be one, um, especially with uh, uh, the the young couple, right? Um, yeah. By Alex and and Lindsay uh, Watson. I think that um, they might have a, a cute storyline that people would be interested in seeing as well. And um, you know, I uh, Netflix is just so huge now. I mean, this was a Netflix production, right? So so they're just, I mean, they've got so much on their plate, so many projects and stuff. Who knows what they got going on? That's true. But I was saying, it's like, it was very successful. So I was like, I don't know why there wouldn't be a reason for it, but you know. Um, yeah, put it out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Um, I know you have another project coming up uh, with ABC. I, 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 it's, it's untitled right now, is it? Or do you have a title for it? Oh, for no, no, no. The, the project that I have coming up in January, we're going to be doing, uh, uh, I'm going to be premiering um, BMF, which is on stars. Yeah, I know and, that. I know that one. Yeah. yeah. It, I, I swear I could have saw something online. It's just like uh, Jessica Gao, Gao or no, no. Oh, no, no, no. That was a long time ago. Oh, that was. So this that was that was a, a a TV pilot that never actually got picked up. That really should have. Okay, because I was saying it was saying like I don't know. I think I saw IMDb and it was saying like on twenty twenty three. So I was like, oh, is it gonna get picked? Up? It made it seem like it was. I don't uh, know. I don't know. Maybe you're getting information that, like I said, I don't know anything. <laughs> Nobody tells me anything. But yeah, I already know about being bad. But, but okay, okay. Yeah. But but anyway, like, what what was that about? Just in case it does get picked up. Um, it was actually uh, Jessica Gao who directed She Hulk, right? Yeah. Um, I think she might have even written it. She wrote for uh, Rick and Morty. She's just freaking genius. And um, this was her uh, her uh, project. It was a pilot that was, um, I guess, inspired by her life. Um, uh, talk, you know, she grew up in America with a uh, Chinese speaking family and, um, and, uh, it, it was just sort it was a comedy, uh, that was just based on her crazy family. And, um, and what made it really interesting was even though she, she explained that like, even though we're, I don't speak Chinese, I don't speak Mandarin, but the characters are supposed to be speaking Mandarin. And so like when we speak English, we have more of an accent, but then when we're speaking Mandarin to one another, we sound with, you know, like American without an accent because she says when she spoke Mandarin to her family, she, there was no accent. 
And so instead of doing subtitles, we would just go back and forth with um, with accents and no accents. It was really interesting, the concept. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I It really, uh, I think it was IMDb. It really made it seem like it was coming in 2023 and everything. I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. Okay, never mind. I'm DVD sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. I don't even know what to say about it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, literally, like, if you go under, it said 2023. I was like, okay, cool. This is actually interesting. Okay, okay never mind. All right, I'm but sure. maybe maybe I'll come in. Maybe I'll have Who knows? Um, I know earlier they said Dwayne The Rock Jackson said he wants to do like a Scorpion King reboot, and I that's like one of my favorite movies. Like the Mummy, the Mummy turned Scorpion King. Those are like my favorite. Like one of my what favorite. Movies great series. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. that series was like such an honor. And yeah. and you know I think people forget too that Scorpion King was like his first film. I mean he did like a small thing in Mummy Three just to sort of introduce the Scorpion yeah. King right very briefly, but um. But 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 Scorpion King was the first film that he starred in, and um and I remember working with him on that and and just knowing that he was going to be a huge star um because it was sort of a void. Remember that like um uh, Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger and all those action guys were kind of fading out, right? And and there wasn't a like a real action hero that that people were sort of glomming onto, and um and he just he had such great appeal like everybody loved him right no matter what race you are no matter how old you are no matter what gender you are everybody loved the Rock and so um you know he's he's just got such amazing charisma and mass appeal and the guy's kind of smart too. <laughs> 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 oh yeah would would you be like wanted to be a part of the reboot because the sources oh my like you killed oh, that role <laughs> that would, yeah that would be amazing but i don't want to have to wear that outfit again <laughs> let's leave that to somebody else <laughs> well you can even come back i got the role like i don't even know like something different and who knows i don't yeah. know but yeah, that I was like, that movie. was literally like one of my favorite, like those three <laughs> movies right there. I was like, yo, yeah. this, like still, if it comes on to this day, I literally like drop everything just to watch it. And then my people would be like, we got to go somewhere. I'd be like, no, I got to watch this movie. Then we could go where we got to go. <laughs> I think a lot of people feel the way you do. It was a really beloved film. I don't know why we didn't get to do another one sooner. No, yeah. Um, you also started Cradle to the Grave as well. I was like, that's literally another. Was that was those shot back to back for you? Yeah, that was kind. Not uh, yes. I mean, pretty close together. I think I I might have shot X Men in the middle of that, but um, but yeah, that was a a really great moment in time where I just had like amazing number one projects after number one project coming out. It was just like tch, crazy, crazy time in my life. Yeah, how is that? That cast is like loaded. That's like one of the most loaded casts like ever. Like to me, right. like uh, yeah, it's like I mean, how was that? Like, how was that? Like, yeah, how yeah, was that? Like, I mean, he he's such a legend, right? I mean, that dude, he was so crazy and and such a nice guy. Really, he's one of those guys that remembers everybody's name and then at, you know like when he passes everyone on set says hello with their name. I mean, you know, he's just incredible, incredible dude. And then, um, and then of course the legend himself, right. Uh, Jet Li, um, I got, I can't believe I got to do a, like a fight scene with him. <laughs> I was like, like in awe, in awe of that guy. <laughs> no, that, that even like Anthony Anderson, Gabriel, you know, everybody, oh, yeah. there's so many, like so many people in that like movie. It was crazy. Do you have like a fondest DMX memory? Um, I didn't get to do a lot of scenes with him. I don't think, um, I, I seriously, I don't think I have any scenes with him in the film. Do I? It's I think probably while. at the end, maybe at the end of the, the film. When you guys, I don't uh, think I no, actually, actually, yeah. I don't think I actually meet up with him. I think, um, I don't want to spoil it for anybody who's never seen it. Uh, it's <laughs> so been, no, you, <laughs> it's not, I mean, you got, I don't know what to tell you. You haven't. <laughs> <laughs> see that? I mean, like, yeah, I had all this time to see. I don't know what to tell you. 
Okay, I know. Okay, uh, I know you just mentioned uh, BMF as well. And Stars is coming back January. Uh, how does it feel like when you first got the news that you're going to be up to a series regular? Oh man, I was floored um, and scared because um, you know it's it's based on like real people, right? And you really want to depict people in the correct light, especially if they're actually living, right? And um, luckily though, for me, this character is not somebody who actually existed in that time. But um, but nevertheless, I still wanted to honor, you know, the character and um, and get as much and do as much research as possible because there was so much going on in that time period in Detroit, you know, with the 80s and um, having just come off of um, uh, the the murder of, um, um, oh Jesus, why can't I remember his name for, uh, it was, there was a lot of um, anti-Asian sentiment at the time. And, um, and so this character growing up in that time period, um, you know, being a cop, going after these drug dealers. Um, it just, it was, it, I just really wanted to um, be as accurate as possible with the history and, and everything that was going on. Was there any like surprises like reading the script? Like, oh my God, I can't believe they actually did this or, you know, such and such. Like, was there any like surprise? Like, oh my God, I can't believe you guys actually lived through this or actually did this in life. Was, there was, was a there... lot, a <laughs> lot. I mean, <laughs> You know, these guys, um, Meech especially, was so much larger than life, right? And and the fact that he's being played by his um, his son, right? Like little yeah. Meech, who, by the way, I mean, kudos to him, right? For him to have taken on such a huge role for like never having acted in his life, and portraying the lead in a series. I mean, it's hard enough when you are a, a, a seasoned actor, but to be able to come on and and just knock it out of the park like he did, you know, never having acted before, it's, I have to give him a lot of credit. That He's he's done a great job. No, I definitely would be scared to like portray like one of my parents in a film. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> I, i'm always saying like what what what's gonna happen like the part where he actually meets his real life mom's character and he's gotta like sleep with her like that's gonna be a little awkward <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I i'd be like no I, that's probably the only role i ever pass up i'm not paying none of my parents right. so, <laughs> i'm sorry I'm, I'm, wanna... I'm wondering if his dad gives him a hard time. You know, he's like, so that was not how it went down. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And they're probably telling you every little text, you every little detail. Like, hey, no, I actually did it this way. Da, 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 da. Exactly. But, you know, I'm just trying to. You got me so soft. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't ignore them because you're your parents. So it's like, oh, man. Like, I, I, I probably would hate to do that personally, but you know, it's working out for him. He's doing a really good job. I mean, he's got to have stress coming from all over the place, <laughs> that poor guy. <laughs> and who's like your favorite character in the show? I, no, outside of yours, of course. Like, who's your favorite character on the show? Yeah. There, was, there are so many fun characters, and everybody's got like such crazy storylines. There's, you know, the twists and turns that happen in this in this show are crazy. I remember watching the first season and just every every single episode, I'm like, whoa, like, did not expect that to happen. Um, but one of my favorite characters was Miles who got killed early on, right? He was so funny. He was just, this guy just must've riffed all the time and just like, he was he was really uh, an amazing actor and made it look really fun. And I I wish I got to work with him, but you know I I don't come on till second season. No, yeah. Is there like uh, do you guys already shoot um, the second season already? Yeah, we we finished it in at the end of June, so it's it's been done. Yeah, we're so, we're going into third season coming up. I think I think is there is there like an episode that you're like really excited for people to see? Um, of course, all of them, of course. But is there like one that sticks out? Like, oh, this episode's like amazing. You know, episode number two and three, um, it, 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 I think it's episode three, 
we, we shot everything in blocks, right? So uh, it's hard to remember which number <laughs> it is. Um, but, um, but yeah, no, my character goes through some crazy stuff and um, totally unexpected twist that says so much about who she is and where she's coming from and what she's dealing with. Um, yeah, I can't, I, I don't want to give it away because it's, it's so good. Yeah. Plus I don't want to get you in trouble anyway. I want to no. be like, <laughs> and, then also, and then also, um, I, you know, getting this show, you know how everybody has to get like naked and everybody's got like sex scenes and stuff. Like I, I had, I went on a mission to like lose weight and get in shape and everything and coming up for, you know, like whatever nudity I had to do on the show. I was like, my 54 year old ass is gonna be like as fit as it possibly can. Cause I'm gonna have a lot to compete with on this show. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so so there's a couple of scenes that I'm a little proud of. <laughs> <laughs> that's just <it. laughs> no, that's good. um it has it oh my bad let me oh, my. <laughs> who's like a who's an actor or like director that you haven't worked with that you really want to work with i know you're probably gonna say Meryl street but <laughs> um you know i don't know i'm just always glad to be working you know, I mean, there's always like the Scorsese's and, you know, people like that, that are doing just awesome work. Spielberg, of, of course, it would be such an honor to work with any of these guys. But, you know, I'm just I'm one of these people who is just happy to be working. I just love being on a set. I love you know, the environment and the um, just the camaraderie and and being creative and the co collaboration. Um, you know, I just love working. Is there like an actor that you want to like work with again? Is uh, like a certain one or? Yeah, you know, I've made really great friends with some people. I mean, it would be awesome to work with The Rock again. Uh, with uh, nobody calls him the rock anymore. Dwayne. Uh, we still call him the rock. I still call him the rock. Yeah, still call him the, call, uh, we still everybody knows him still calls him the rock. Really? Everybody I want, yeah, we still if we watch WWF, WWE, you call him the rock stuff. That's true. That's true. You know, uh, I never did. I never watched any of that. And um and after we fin fi finished shooting uh Scorpion King, he got you know, he got back in the ring and he invited like, I don't know, 50 of us from the cast and crew to come and watch him. And I had never had so much fun in my life. I was shocked by just like driving in there and seeing all these people with these signs and, you know, like dressed up and like, it was crazy. And it was like going to like a political rally or something with all these people with all these signs for him. And then, and then just watching this character that he plays the rock. Uh, I died laughing so hard that I actually had to leave early because I had launched myself into an asthma attack. I was <laughs> laughing so hard and screaming so hard like i totally get it i totally get this whole wwe or wwf thing no yeah that's like that's how we like i definitely grew up like that's the rock like it's weird when people call him dwayne honestly yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll stop <laughs> no 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 you're kidding oh uh, what is your advice for somebody that's like uh, pursuing a career in voice acting? I know that's like very hard and it's very small. And it seems like voice actors seem to play a hundred different voices in other shows. <laughs> it's it's true. Like the talent that voice actors have. I mean, like I don't consider myself a real. I do a lot of work. I I do voice acting, but I don't do like a thousand different characters like some of these guys. It's so fun to be in the room with these people because they just go off and they're just some of the craziest, uh, like, you know, it, it's as though they have like all these different like characters and people living inside them that are just like bursting to come out all the time. Um, I, the, the, if somebody wants to get into voice acting, um, first of all, they have to understand what kind of talent is out there. 
um, and what they're what they are going to uh, what's going to be expected of them um, being able to do different accents and different uh, voices of all ages of all genders of of every social economic I mean of monsters of any creatures I mean you have to be so versatile and um, and and like any other acting I think you just have to not give up you know Perfect. it's 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 a really really tough business and um and this is what i tell actors uh starting out even on camera you have to love the craft you have to love acting more than you love working because um that's the only thing that i think gets you through all the disappointments and rejections is just being able to do the craft. No, I feel like acting so like just so that's probably like one of the most competitive things ever. Like there's like because everybody thinks they can do it. it. Yeah, but there's so <laughs> many people like trying to do it, and it's like you might not ever hear something. Or if you do, you might get one gig or something. It's just crazy. But yeah. oh yeah, speaking of that, like my last question for you is like, what's one thing people should know about enter before entering the film industry? Um, besides, you know, what we just talked about, all the rejection um, and hard work, um, I think people should understand that, um, that, uh, you know, you, you really have to have uh, a strong sense of who you are, because um, if you are one of the lucky few who gets to work and do this for a living, it's easy to get caught up and lost in all of the smoke and mirrors that is that are created for you, right? Um, and um, and and keep uh, like your loved ones um, and people that you trust close. Um, I think that uh, a lot of times people make the mistake of trusting the wrong people or letting go of you know, friends that, that they had before that no longer serve them or whatever. I feel like my friends and my family who have known me forever are the ones who keep me grounded and help me get through those, those periods where you feel like you can never do this again. Okay. That's beautiful. I like that. That's a really yeah. good. That's really good. Well, I appreciate you coming on. It was always, it's always a pleasure. I can't wait to be in my comes on on Gen January 6th. <laughs> January 6th. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, Thank I can't you. wait. Thank this you so much for fun. taking Tim out. No, yeah. Was just, but, like, <laughs> I was so happy when I found out you were coming on. So I was like, yo, this is amazing. But I really Thank appreciate you. it. It's been great. <laughs> <laughs>